Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Pranzata Podcast. I am your host, Andrea Pranzatelli. This is episode number 52 on this podcast series here on YouTube. I have a guest today and she is the very, she's two of the very first two things on this podcast. One, she's the very first returning podcast guest. She has been on my podcast one year ago, uh, roughly a year ago. And second, she was the first woman on my podcast. And she's still only like the third or fourth woman that's been on my <laughs> podcast. But she was the first woman. She's the first returning guest. And we have a lot of things to ask her today and to talk about with her. Before we get into it, this is a podcast where I interview musicians, comedians, and artists from New, Jer uh, New Jersey, New York, and Philadelphia area. If you're into that, don't forget to hit subscribe. But anyways, and I don't know if I said her name. Her name is Arson the Poet. But now, this is going to segue into the conversation. She's now technically Arson the Author. And she was not Arson the Author last year. <laughs> Bitch wrote a fucking book. I've never had a friend who wrote a book before. So we're going to... First of all, how did this... Ha I didn't even know you were writing a book. What, what's going on here? Is this like a poetry book? What is this? Okay. Yeah, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on that. But... um. Actually, I have a confection to make that uh -oh. um, I was sort of writing the book when I was here last. <laughs> oh, you were so, and you didn't tell me about it because you yeah. didn't want me to talk about it on the podcast. It wasn't even that I wasn't allowed to have be killed <laughs> by oh. my publisher. <laughs> okay, <But>. so <laughs> I, I like I don't even know how this works. Okay, so how long did it take you to write this book? So you were in the process of writing it during the podcast, but you weren't allowed to say anything. How yeah. long have you been writing it this for? I mean, technically, I wrote the book for. Uh, three and a half years because I was in an abusive relationship and I didn't know how to channel my rage and I <laughs> or and poetry has always been my way to like channel any kind of emotions I don't really know how to communicate which yeah. aside from laughing is most emotions so yeah. um I wrote this book it was actually a 500 page manuscript so it was like a thick mama but <laughs> <laughs> but she's now like a fifth of that and yours wouldn't look like that if you bought this copy book. so what's the title of the book this is and called let's show let's show it to them this is called oh my god i should have brought a better copy but <laughs> um this is the one that comes with me every year but this is called introspectrum i call it bat mauve book <laughs> and um yeah it's it's literally um just about an evolution from you know heartbreak to finding self-love and it's and how is it set up is it all poems or is there some poems and some stories about your life like how does it work oh i wish i had stories about my life because <laughs> you know i love talking about myself no but i'm just kidding no it's all poet it's all poems but it's actually really cool like you could literally open any book any page in this book and it'll be a message like it's okay. each poem is on a page and oh, it's that's like, fucking awesome yeah it's literally how like did you, so how did the process of writing a book go as far as getting it published like where do you go to find a publisher do, can anybody get a book published or does somebody have to actually say i like your work and i want to do this how does that work how does that relationship work so the publishing thing is kind of um interesting like um i was following this uh small black owned publishing company for a while on okay. on um on instagram called two eye publishing because i just really like i know that the person who is the owner of it is also a poet himself and i really like his poetry his name is tony langhorn big ups to him and um he posted about he was looking for manuscripts and i said hey um it's locked down so i have nothing better to do <laughs> let me see what do you think of this and i was like please don't judge me <laughs> as i yeah. sent this 500 page manuscript yeah. over and then little to little did i know that he would actually give me a call and he said he was interested in in publishing the book that's fucking awesome yeah so where can people buy the book we should um, i'm gonna include a link below if you guys want to find it but where where can you tell them to get oh them? oh bro i can get it everywhere pretty much um you can get it on audio amazon is there an audio version of it as well there isn't an audio version of it but i should do you that. should read it Damn. you should be the one reading it i've been told that i have an audiobook voice <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how, how to take so that. <laughs> i remember okay so i rem i was gonna ask you this so i remember last year when we did a live uh poetry reading on my podcast you said at the time you dealt with like stage fright how is that 
are you do you still have stage fright now or have i you don't gotten care over yeah it? but that, i i feel good i'm very proud to report to you that i definitely do not have that anymore i still stutter as you saw right now <laughs> i think that's just a part of my uh wait, why i guys she literally just got back from getting um a booster shot yeah and a flu shot at the same time because i'm crazy <laughs> i just feel wild <laughs> so no symptoms right now like like from the flu shot or the vaccine or anything? just like hot, hot, flashes, hot flashes but i don't know i'm like cl- Menop- approaching 40 so menop- i don't know <laughs> I forgot <laughs> you I forgot you're you look so good for your age I forgot oh, like I, I I'm actually having flashbacks of our f- speaking of flash <laughs> hot flashes I'm having flashbacks of our last conversation I remember being shocked to find are we allowed to tell them how old you are yeah T- tell me tell me again exactly I'm 36 <laughs> 36 years old she has amazing skin if you're sweating a lot it's doing you justice because it's it's giving you a glow yes that's what we'll call it it's uh, it's highlight guys um moisturizer and water that I don't drink that i should <laughs> by the way i have a random question because somebody is sun bad for your skin i've heard it's bad unless you put sunscreen on like you're supposed to put sunscreen on every day but because i met a lady the other day who was in her 60s and she had amazing skin no wrinkles and i was like holy shit i was like you i have more wrinkles th- than the 65 year old woman and she was like i was like what's your secret and she was like i go out in the sun and i'm like what i'm like isn't that supposed to fuck your skin up and she was like no you have to just get the right balance of sun mm-hmm. she's like if you just go in for the right amount every day it does wonders for your skin it's usually the people that stay out all day that's when it fucks it up but i'm like damn i've been avoiding the sun for years now because i thought it would make me wrinkly and meanwhile you know this lady over here she's like perfect skin and she goes out in the sun every day so i'm like i need to start going on the sun again <laughs> uh yeah because i've heard i mean i've heard slash this is my um amazing medical science that i know very little of but <laughs> the sun gives you vitamin d which is important for your skin and just like yeah. energy wise so yeah. i think that she probably has the right idea by getting just a balance of it but if you yeah. overdo it then yeah then you get that. i'm gonna start going out again because i tan really well so i'm like I want that tan, but I don't want that wrinkle. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> I just want the tan. Yeah. Um, Although I got the, I started getting crow's feet recently and I was just like, eh. I don't I laugh crow's a lot. feet. <laughs> I don't have any crow's feet because I don't smile ever <laughs> because I always have resting bitch face. So I have the, uh, they call them the 11 lines and my dad has it hard. So I know it's coming because, you know, we're, me and my dad have a similar face, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, I'm getting those hardcore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> <You're> crazy <laughs> nah. so do you still have your dog yes i still have my dog and i've been uh, i'm like obsessed with making reels of him as you probably saw on my instagram <laughs> i brought the cutest dog i've never seen a dog with an underbite <laughs> yeah and it's a um king charles i think so <laughs> That's a good response, right? It's really bad. It's like he's some kind of spaniel mix. We think he has King Charles in him. Yeah. We also think he has Springer Spaniel in him. Yeah, but and he has his like massive underbite. I'm probably gonna edit a picture of him because he is the cutest <laughs> thing I've ever seen ever. So cool. Um, so speaking of your book, would you end your no longer having stage fright? Would you care to read us a selection? Sure. Okay. So the book is actually in. So the idea. Well. <laughs> As I, I don't have stage fright as I fuck up everything. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the book has like three different phases, basically. Um, the idea, that's why it's like an, a gradient effect. Yeah. It's, um, we did like dark, penumbra, and light. So dark is about the heartbreak. Penumbra is like coming out of the heartbreak, finding yourself. And light is all about self, uh, like love. So which section seems most appealing to you at the moment? Um, coming out of the dark. I, f- I feel like that's probably what aligns most with me right now i feel like i went through a dark phase and i'm coming out of it okay so i think that would speak to me cool well first of all i have to like show the art because i'm obsessed with the art of this book who did the art for you um it's this girl named nupur nair she's actually a part of the publishing company oh, cool and she's a poet herself pretty much everyone who's in this publishing company is also a poet so it's it's pretty cool um i have i'm trying to find one that's less depressing what's the name of the publishing company uh two eye publishing Okay, I recoil into my silence. My presence drifts away. I'm not an important factor in your story. Never was. Just happenstance. But I do play a major role in my own, though. And I know what I deserve. So now I'm holding the pen. Because owning who you are is the greatest strength. It is the ink. 
I am no longer narrated by what you think. And this one's called The Protagonist. It's like super short. <laughs> thanks, 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 thanks. <laughs> yeah, they're all super short because I was like, uh, I just want people to be able to like hear the words and if they can resonate to it, that would be awesome. Yeah. I find myself often going back to this book and being like, oh, damn. And then I remember I'm I read it. I'm to get a copy of that because um, I, I'm ashamed to admit I don't read a lot of poetry, but I feel like it would be good for me. Um, I always had this theory that if I read more poetry, it would somehow seep into my mind and I'd be able to write better song lyrics. I don't know if that's true, but I thought that it would sort of inspire me to think of things more poetically mm-hmm. if I were to read more poetry. You know? I feel like they're interconnected because you'll you'll often hear like po- uh, poets have become songwriters and songwriters are also write poetry and stuff like that. Yeah. So there probably is uh, something to it and yeah i could i could definitely say that because you have to find in both both like pieces you have to find symbol symbolism and significance in like pretty much anything yeah. you do you'd probably be an amazing poet i mean i don't feel like i'm an amazing set that, that's the thing i don't feel like i'm an amazing s- lyric writer i feel like i'm a good songwriter in the sense that i can write good chord progressions i can write good melodies i can write good musical parts mm-hmm. Um, I don't mean to sound arrogant when I say that. I just have confidence that I could do that. And I, I've i never felt confident in my lyrical abilities. Mm. Um, so I don't think I would be a good poet. I think I would be a horrible poet, actually. As a matter of fact, I think we talked about this on my last, last podcast. I submitted, one time I wrote a poem and I submitted yeah. it to um, a poem contest. And they sent it back and said, this is not a poem. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, it was in a letter format it, it like but that's cool though to, to me but I, I i i think and i think i don't want to repeat the same conversation that we had our yeah. podcast last podcast but to just kind Check of reiterate <laughs> we were sort of got into a side conversation after that where i think that poetry has evolved into a different thing like there's more branches of poetry yeah. and i think back then it was a little snobbier it was like you have to it was like a poetry competition where it was like you have to write a haiku with this amount of vowels or like whatever it was like yeah really specific and i think now poetry can mean a lot of different things there's like spoken word and all different kind of thing and there are letter format poems and stuff like that but yeah at the time i it was my first time writing a poem and i got kicked out <laughs> got kicked out of the club dude i still get canceled um I'm going to go on a tangent, like, hold on, a little bit of a rant, small, small rant. Go for it. But what I realized is, like, publishing journals, poetry journals versus doing spoken word, I feel like because spoken word is so free written and people uh, and most poets these days are more free written, I feel like some publications are a little bit snobby in general. Yeah. because they're so they would they would prefer a poet who knows their formats i think that's what it was i yeah. think it was like i i clearly didn't go to poet university like yeah I, like I, I just it was literally it was i went through a heartbreak i went through a heartbreaking situation and um i wrote this guy a love letter and i never gave it to him but then when i read the love letter i'm like this is actually super poetic yeah. i'm gonna just kind of change a few things around here and submit it to a poem you know like like a poetry competition or whatever and they were like no this this isn't but yeah <laughs> yeah don't let them tell you you're not a poet you're a poet god damn it <laughs> yeah i guess art can take a lot of different forms you know because i yeah like i even noticed like i I feel like my poetry, not to sound like a cocky bitch, but whatever. Uh, I feel like my poetry is generally well received, but then like when I go to submit to journals and I always get, you did good and it resonated with me, but it's not what we were looking for. Yeah. And I know that is because I don't really know the forms. I like, I'm, like I tell everybody, I'm like kind of an accidental poet, right? So it's like. Do you think this publishing company is more open-minded with that type of stuff? Um, yeah, I, I think they know. I think it's because they are poets themselves and they've been through they the get experience. It, yeah. They get it, yeah. That's interesting because I feel like in the... I don't know if there's anything like that in the music business. I guess I could say classical musicians. Like, there's there's kind of a little bit of a snobbery with classical musicians sometimes. Like, I, again, I've, I don't want to repeat this conversation I've had with a, a musical guest that I've had on here, but me and um, Bobby Mahoney, he was on here, and we were talking about how I had this college professor... Um, because I went to classical music, classical music school, and she said that um, she didn't believe that rock and roll is music at all. And we're just what? like, yeah, like, like. So I guess the equivalent of that in the music world would be some classical musicians think that music is only music if it's this high, like, intense, like, form of music. You know what I mean? With like really specific goals and stuff like that. Um, and that's just not the case. You know? Yeah. 
I don't, I don't, yeah, I would say these bitches don't know what they're talking about, but, <laughs> but they probably, I mean, they do. I mean, probably. like, there's, they're respectable in the there's some people who listen to, but, and there's even different versions of that. Like, there's a lot of people who don't think rap is music. And I think that's yeah. really stupid, too. I think that's incredibly closed minded. Cause when you really break down music, if you, I don't know what the, I don't have, you know, an assistant here to look up my stuff, but I feel like if you Googled the definition of music, it might say something like organized sound that elicits an emotional response like it might break down to something like that i feel like at the core of it so who's to say what kind of sounds are supposed to and the same thing with poetry it's like whatever gets an emotional like if these publishers are saying i got an emotional response from this that should be good like that should be good right i was like isn't that like what you want like isn't that what you want? I don't yeah. know. What that you're- <laughs> and, and and it's been like a few times that I got that. It's like we really resonated with your piece, but it's not what we're looking for. I'm like, but you just said you resonated with it. <laughs> so yeah, what- it's kind of dumb. But I'm like, okay, maybe it's just like I, I get old it. School yeah. like art form or whatever. They're yeah. trying to stay with the tradition. K- yeah, exactly. And yeah. I'm like, I get it, but I don't. Also, so yeah. <laughs> so you say this book was um, inspired mostly from a relationship that you yeah. were in how long were you in this relationship are we allowed to talk about this because i don't want to step on any ba- i mean i guess it's in your books so. yeah plus you know i talk about whatever with you anyways yeah. uh, how long were you in this abusive relationship it was two and a half years um it was it was not physical but it was narcissistic and mental um and yeah i didn't know how to get out out of it and anytime i don't know like i was saying anytime i don't know how to get out of something i just start writing it down and then all this came out and then of course they revised it a little bit because they took out that like fuck you has this <laughs> like, guy ha- has he read any of this poetry or tried to reach out to you after you wrote this book or or has he found out about any of these poems and stuff like that i don't know if he knows about the poems but he does reach out continuously and i have oh, to wow he, it, this is the thing with like abusers in general right sorry this is if it's a trigger warning for any trigger for anybody but they like to have the control over people right so yeah. they'll so he like he will text me from different numbers and and stuff like that so he always is reaching out i don't know if he, he probably has the book and i'm I don't sure know. If, he, if he's going that far out of his way to he knows contact you from different sites i'm sure he knows where you live and <laughs> yeah like thank that. god i just moved i'm like did you guys live together no thank god <laughs> Because if we had, that could have been even harder to get out of, I feel like. When you were in that, did any of your family know about it? Or was it something that you kind of kept to yourself? My my family and my friends were the ones to call it out for me. I okay. was I was lucky and they were like, dude, what are you doing? And I was just like, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. Because I'm, I want to say it's because I'm a hopeless romantic, but I also think I'm just like, I, I was just kind of like, oh, this is the best I could do because that's what he made me believe, right? And after a while, I was just like, no. Uh, yeah. are you serious no <laughs> no way yeah no I've, I've had a situation like that one time and it's again i feel like we might have said this on the last podcast but i'm sh- sure we have new listeners that haven't listened that far back but i was gonna say when you're in a situation like that sometimes outsiders might be like are you fucking dumb yeah like what are you doing why would you date someone like that or why would you do that but i don't think people realize how it kind of sneaks up on you yeah like like a lot of people like that really put on a good show sort of thing and they put on a good show in front of other people mm-hmm. but it sounds like in your case he didn't because other people were able to see through it and call it out well that was just because of how i how drained i was yeah but like it was like a circle right like it started off like they like they say it's like classic textbook they start with a like they yeah. love bomb you and you're like oh this is the best thing ever like mm-hmm. no one has treated me this great and then as you get more comfortable with them their actual real selves come out right and then it's like a cycle no i'm not normally like that please trust me you know you can trust me you know you've seen me in the beginning and then and then after a while it just gets worse and worse and they see how far they can take it and then eventually you're just like either you're like i've had enough or yeah it's 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 rough because like i i feel like it's something unless you're in it you don't understand what it's like and a lot of people from like i said in my experience a lot of people from the outside kind of judged me i guess you could say for being in a situation like that um but it's i don't know i i was able to eventually get out of that situation but it took a year it took a year for me to get yeah yeah it takes a while it it takes a while like people can tell you and you know they're speaking logically but and you're you're, no it's not not that person yeah no no it's not the person you can even read about it like i read about it continuously googled about it i'm like oh but he doesn't do this part yeah so it's not yeah you kind of make excuses for the person or you feel hopeful that they're gonna change and that sort of thing like that 
Yeah. I and have then, a roommate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if I was, like, was that the cat? Went, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, you, the last time. Yeah, she she came to my original podcast studio. She was in my old house. We had a bright green wall. I'm not sure. It's weird because at the time I looked at the green wall after the podcast and i was like what was i thinking with this bright green wall at the I time i loved it <laughs> you loved it and that's the thing i was gonna say now i look at it and i'm like i kind of like it like i kind of <laughs> want it back now you know what i mean i can't make up my mind like what to do with my <laughs> podcast you know i had a blue wall i had a green wall now i have uh just like a white wall with lights on it sometimes i turn the lights pink so Ooh. drop in the comments section below what you guys think about that mm -hmm. what kind of what did you like the blue wall the green wall or the colored wall <laughs> with this whatever you call it it's like a clean studio vibe it's like yeah i'm not sure what i'm going for though i don't know if i want to go for like the high tech like like light vibe or if i want to go back for the old school vibe but we'll see eventually i'll move again and have to do it all over again so. <laughs> uh the moving part i just recently moved to my own place and i'm like oh, oh you just recently moved into your own place yeah in oh, november shit. is that your that's your first time yeah oh my god that's awesome congratulations <laughs> thanks where do you live i live in new brunswick now but. okay you were in edison before right i was in east brunswick, east brunswick. <laughs> okay, I thought you were not too edison. far away i said it yeah. like i moved really far but i did it <laughs> i moved like 10 minutes down the street and you're all by yourself <laughs> yep i'm all by myself in a two bedroom and then i try to steal the dog every so often from my parents they're holding him hostage i swear mom and speaking of animals look who's, who's the visitor i don't think you ever met him no i met the orange one the, I see uh, jazzy loves you um, yeah, Neo Hi. lived with me at the time, but at the time he wasn't social. Oh my god! He's so funny. he's. I think my roommate made him social because he he was very antisocial, and then ever since she moved in here, he really likes her. So now he just opens up to people more often. It's Hi, crazy. Buddy. I'm just gonna steal your cats. It's funny. <laughs> okay, I got him during the pandemic. So because like during the the middle of the pandemic. Or not in the middle of the pandemic, but like one week before the pandemic hit, I got him. So he never got to meet people because I was in, we were in quarantine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he, that's why he was so antisocial because he was just so used to just living with me and um, the roommates that I lived with at the time. And those were the only people he trusted and he hated anyone else. But now he's finally coming around and it's really cute. Yeah. Oh my God. Don't knock the camera over, buddy. Oh, yes. <laughs> the table is very scratchy. <laughs> scratchy. <laughs> cats, that's the thing with cats. They scratch all the furniture apart. I don't I'm know what talking do, to do him dog, like a dog. <laughs> do dogs do that too? No, my dog just like, he will like rub his, roll around on the floor like a weirdo. Do dogs destroy <laughs> things in the house? How does that work? Like when they're puppies? But what about when they're older? I mean, it depends on how you train them. But I mean, my puppy does not. Even though he's 10 years old, he's not really he's not a puppy, a puppy anymore. Yeah, no, cats are very easy to take care of. The only thing they do is they scratch up furniture. And people used to get their cats declawed, but that's illegal now because it's, oh. um, I think it's not humane because I think apparently when you declaw a cat, you're actually taking, it would be like, it would be like if you took a human's fingernails off, but actually went even further down, like into, oh. yeah. So Ooh, it used to be a thing that people did, but now they consider it inhumane. Yeah, so I, I think there's some never. states that still do it. So some people will actually drive to other states to get it done. Um, but I don't want to do that to my babies. No, they, they're Plus, so cute. Plus, not only that, but if, if God forbid they ran away and they needed to catch prey yeah. or defend oh, themselves. That would stink, yeah. Yeah, like I can't just assume that nothing bad could happen. So if... if you can't believe what your friends, <laughs> your friends. <laughs> i know no he's been really sweet he might also smell um the dog on you he yeah. likes an i mean i think he likes other animals but oh he probably does because i have dog fur everywhere i swear I, I this is a laundered shirt and it's still like this <laughs> so <laughs> it's so funny how much my cats have swapped personalities because jazzy used to be the biggest sweetheart and now he's becoming a grumpy old man but oh, he really oh. he's only sweet to me he loves me, but he hates everybody else. <laughs> Jazzy! <laughs> like, like, oh, <laughs> he just looked at me like, what now? <laughs> what? <laughs> and then Neo used to hate everybody, and now he's super sweet. They've just totally swapped personalities. No, I mean, Jazzy is still sweet, but he's just mostly sweet to me, and then kind of just gives everybody else dirty looks. <laughs> I just saw Jazzy, like, trying to get into my purse earlier. I was like, oh, there, <laughs> that's not the <laughs> I mean, I will take you home if you want me to. <laughs> 
feel like you're t- uh, the type of dog you have probably could get along with cats. I feel like different cats and different dogs, different breeds could do it in some camp. But I feel like you're kind of, I feel like a King Charles and a cat could get along. I think. Yeah, Soko, pr- pr- Soko pretty much like he'll act like he's like a guard dog. And then as soon as he gets near to whatever he's barking at, he's just like. He's like. I'm like, I, like all show, all talk. He, yeah. he talks to talk, but doesn't walk the walk. He's like, oh hi, and then he's, or he'll just wag his tail. I'm like, wow, so vicious. I've never actually seen what Soko has done face to face with a cat before. Like we've had cats on our deck and stuff like that, and he just kind of just, and that's it. Yeah, I I think Neo is okay with dogs. I think Jazzy could be okay with dogs, but he's just kind of scared at first. He's like that with most animals. Aww. We're actually getting, not getting another cat, but my roommate has a cat and she's going to be bringing him in soon. So I'm pretty, like, That's I'm wondering how they're all going to interact with each other. You know what I mean? Oh, it could be fun though. It could be. It, it could be hit or miss. We could see what happens. They could love each other or they could hate each other. Jazzy, um, Jazzy's pretty, like, he'll, he's cool. He'll warm up eventually. Neo, Neo's cool too, but he could be a little aggressive because he tries to play with other cats and he sometimes takes it a little too far. Like he, he, cause he's so big, you know, he thinks he's playing, but he's hurting people. <laughs> he's hurting other Are animals. you a fluffy? Look at his, Are look at a fluffy cat. Look at his eye. Look, look at the way he's blinking at you. He winked at me. Yeah. I think we're friends. Yeah. FYI, people who don't have cats, ca- when cats do a slow blink, that's their way of telling you they trust you. He trusts you. Oh, it's their way of being like, I don't need to open my eyes around like like you know how cats have an intense stare it's mm-hmm. because they're protecting themselves they're like bitch i gotta keep an eye on you but if they if they go like this too they're like i don't have to look at you you're you're trustworthy i have a friend <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel after to be done with this book do you now do you okay because from personal experience i remember one time i planned for this big classical concert mm-hmm. um in college and it was everything to me. It was like every day practicing. And then when it was done, everyone's like, you must feel great. And I was like, actually, I feel really depressed because <laughs> everything I had just been building up for is is done now. And now I have to do it again. How, do, how does this feel? Like, do you feel like I've done it? I feel amazing. I wrote a book. Or do you kind of have that depletion? Like, OK, now what next? It's kind of been like I'm kind of floating because it's still not a yeah it's still yeah. not a reality to me. It's super surreal that it's a thing. It's not ever something that I pictured myself doing because mm-hmm. like I always did poetry just to like do like you know as a way to vent and like I was yeah. saying I keep saying the same damn thing but like <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean like I just use it like as a way to like you know chill out and then to get the opportunity first of all is a huge blessing and I, and I, i'm so grateful for it and to actually see it as a real thing it's got to be wild yeah it's crazy i guess it's probably you know it's probably de- like i felt a little bit of depression after i was done because the thing is when you when you do a concert it's gone and like yeah the mo- like it's just like you do the concert and that moment's gone forever yeah. i mean you could always record it and look back at it but this is like a tangible thing you can touch and hold and you'll continue to sell copies so i guess that's why it might be um maybe i'm just a dark person maybe that's why no. that's why i experienced <laughs> no but I, after, I get it though after Cause... like finishing a, a big concert like that um no but I, I did go through a high period but it lasted like two weeks and then i was like <laughs> fuck what next like it, it just went away you know i get that too like i'm st- it's starting to become a reality for me so i started like i'm like oh should i write a second book like, <laughs> like i was gonna ask like what's your plan like what are you doing now do you want to start writing more poetry or do you do you have to kind of wait for something to inspire you or do you just sit down and write uh for me it's usually like i'll like randomly get inspired and then i'll have yeah. to like write it down in my in my phone and then type it yeah. up properly so that it's not autocorrected into something j- jumbled yeah. but yeah that's been my like oh i'll be like watching my do- like dog walk or something yeah. and i'll be like oh you know it'd be a great poem something about a puppy and then i'd like start yeah. writing about it so i mean for me then i it, my publishers have been like when are you coming up with a second book right like because yeah. And it took me a long time to think of something, but I think I finally got a concept like last week. Oh, so they actually invited you back to write another yeah. book. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. I know. I'm, I'm like super excited about that. So I'm like, wow, oh. good for you. And um, this this book, 
is going to be read at the New York Poetry uh, Festival in July, and oh, it was, cool. and it was last year as well, which is kind of oh, cool. That, so did did you get to do a live reading of it? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah and I get to do it again. <laughs> and they and they reached out to you for it, right? You didn't have to seek out the opportunity. The publishing company actually got. Yep. Oh, that's really cool. So it's like. Not only did you write this book, but you're getting opportunities to do stuff with it as well. Yeah, like I said, the, my publisher is awesome. Like he, he, he. It's kind of cool because like all the authors under the under this umbrella, we're all kind of like a family and fr- friends. So yeah. we all plug each other's books, plug it's each other's. It's a other small work. publishing company. Like everyone kind of knows each other. Yeah. yeah, it's a small one that's growing really fast. They came out with like th- three or four different books this uh, this month itself, yeah. and one was a novel, one was a children's book, and so they're like branching out of poetry. <laughs> last time we were burping on the podcast we had an excuse because we had wine and now we're sober and we're still like <laughs> i mean i didn't burp yet but l- I remember last time we were like both burping and it was just like we always burp on this podcast but i don't know i haven't been drinking as much as i used to you know yeah i, I can't do it anyway i get hangovers now it's not fun like like i, oh I, God, I, I die yeah <laughs> i love i mean i like the taste of alcohol i love a beer like i love a glass of wine but I don't know if it's just me aging or getting older, but I like I get horrible hangovers now to the point where it's like, what's the point? Like, I don't like, you know, yeah. what I, mean? like, I can't live my life with a horrible hangover. Now. I have like two glasses of wine and I'm like out yeah. <laughs> for no, two days after that. We had a podcast. I was wasted. I don't, oh, know, I don't like I'm surprised you drove home that night. I think you were under control. I think you were like, I can only have one or two glasses because you had a work meeting. You had to go to some type of work. Zone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Af- right after right I had after to go the for podcast. The, I and I was like, meeting. <laughs> I, I remember being like, that's no problem. And because you were you can only have like one and a half glasses of wine i ended up drinking the entire rest of the <laughs> bottle and when, when you left i had the entire and i remember being like shit oh my god my cat's in your purse right now <laughs> <laughs> i remember being shit faced by myself and i think i was drunk pretty drunk towards the end of that I, w- I couldn't tell no i know you couldn't tell <laughs> like because i remember listening back to it and i was like i actually did a good job considering how drunk i was <laughs> like i, I don't <laughs> but i promise you i'm sober right now this is tea i'm drinking uh the most non-alcoholic thing i'm drinking um not cinnamon what the hell is it mint i'm drinking mint tea like i don't think it gets any more sober than that i had a coke (laughs) that's why i'm like oh i knew i shouldn't have i knew it caffeinated Mm -hmm. i was like "Mm, so it does i can't drink (laughs) like man i'm i sound like the the biggest like little bitch right now i can't handle anything i can't have caffeine (laughs) past 12 like if i have caffeine past noontime i'll be up all night me too. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the wait, but maybe the vaccine will knock you out when you. Get yeah, home. I'm like, uh, like I was saying, like as I was driving over, all of a sudden I was like, oh, sweat. That's good. <laughs> I don't remember getting sweat, but I do remember you getting sweaty at the last podcast. I think like, that's my thing. Sweaty. Maybe it's, maybe it's maybe it's not the vaccine. Maybe you're just nervous. Do you get nervous? I don't feel nervous right now. I I think I'm just a sweaty person. <laughs> Maybe I'm that's just a sweaty just, bitch. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah. I'm not a sweaty person for some reason. I go to the gym and I don't really, like, I, I work out hard and I don't really sweat. And I don't know if that's a good thing. I feel like sweating must be a healthy thing. Oh, I wish I was like that. I'll come out, like, drenched, like I took a shower. No, I was saying this on one of my podcast episodes a couple episodes ago. I actually shower before I go to the gym. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, I said that right. I shower before I go to the gym and I don't shower after which is really strange good for you i could because yeah. I, don't, I don't really sweat so it's like when oh, i go yeah. to the gym i want to be able to focus i don't oh my god my cat's trying to hi jump up. no Come the on, cat, jump the, up. The i want him to jump up good. so he could be in the shot <laughs> oh um I was like, he gave fire. up though hi you're cute mm-hmm. no but like when i go to the gym i i don't i want to be able to focus on my workout without like feeling like i have a dirty butthole or something so i'm just like i'm just like i want to be able to focus on my workout and then when i'm done i'm like well i didn't really sweat so i'll just put on deodorant and i'm good to go oh lucky you i my mom is like that and i got all my dad's jeans including the body hair and the sweat and the body hair. <laughs> and i'm single just saying <laughs> no, like, but um yeah so anywhere at like any like little bit of heat i'm like no. yeah <laughs> I'm this cat. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. His name is Neo. Neo. Yes. Neo. That's right. <laughs> Neo. Yeah. You didn't meet him the last time because I did have him, but he was, mm-hmm. that was like was in I the said, bathroom though. Really close to the, like a few weeks before the 
pandemic hit like i feel like that's when you were over or maybe not i don't know when it was but yeah, i definitely had him and he was yeah. no no it wasn't it was the summer the when you came to the last podcast <gasps> look at his face <laughs> <laughs> oh my, i funny. wish the audience could see what's going on right now but he's just he's doing, like this. he's literally going like this right <laughs> with beautiful green eyes just yeah he's so cute yeah he was hiding in the bathroom oh hello oh you went he was hiding in the bathroom <laughs> yeah oh did you go to the bathroom i don't remember you going to the bathroom no you were saying he was in the bathroom because i had oh, at, your ha- at my house yeah 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 oh you remember that that's crazy yeah he was hiding I, in I don't the know I re- i'll remember anything <laughs> but animals nothing else though <laughs> don't mind me <laughs> no i know you're an animal lover because i remember jazzy oh. you and jazzy had a love affair at my house <laughs> the last time but cats love me <laughs> in general they feel, i feel like cats pick up on people's energy and and there are some people that like i feel like cats really are in tune with people's energy so if you're a chill person they'll come up to you if you're like a neurotic person they're gonna run away from you you know i mean i am but <laughs> i'm glad i can hide it <laughs> you're a, but you're a i know what you're saying you you're a calm neurotic I feel like you're you you can be a little neurotic and like you get like jittery excessively and sweaty and get excessively sweaty, but you're also a calm neurotic. I don't know if that's possible, but that's how that's the vibe I get from you. <laughs> you're a peaceful. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to draw assumptions because I don't know what your inner world is like. But I don't feel like you're a mean person. I try not to be. Yeah. No. That I, I I've never seen anything mean out of you. Yeah, unless you like give me a lot of bullshit, then I'll be like, shut the fuck up. Oh, you have a, a threshold, like you can. <laughs> yeah, I, it started like in my mid thirties. I started getting it. I think I'm gonna be a really grumpy old lady. That's what I, <laughs> I've come to the conclusion because, like, prior to that, I'd be like, mm, okay, whatever, like that. Yeah. And now I'm like, you better, st- especially after starting performing more. Yeah, I have like you're building your confidence. Ooh, I'm like, no, that's not gonna work. If you can't, it. well, yeah. it sounds to me like you said. Um, Ooh. You might have been the type of person when you were younger, you took a lot of shit from people. And I think over time that kind of builds up and builds up and builds up and people, you're going to go insane if that doesn't, if that doesn't leak out through your poetry or whatever or something else. Um, So it makes sense that you're kind of reaching a point where you're like, nah. Yeah, that's, I'm good with that and not going to do that. Sorry. I actually went through something like that myself. I like most of my life I was a really heavy people pleaser. And then finally when I got to the point where I was like, I need to like stand up for myself Mm -hmm. more often i had i had suppressed so much of that for so many years that it it turned into like blow like i couldn't find the balance between the two it was like i'm just gonna say nothing or i'm just gonna completely blow up and say everything i shouldn't say yeah and i feel like i'm finally reaching a point in life that's why i picked the section of the book that was like coming out of the dark like i feel like i'm finally reaching a point in life where i I'm learning how to communicate properly. You know what I mean? It's yeah, taken a that. long time, but me too. Like I mean, for me, like up until like my twenties, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say anything. And then in my twenties, it would just be like an explosion. <laughs> I would just start ex- I made like I felt bad. I feel bad like every time I think about it. I, I made my best friend cry. I made like a bunch of people cry because I was just like, What did you, ah! what did you say? I don't remember exactly, but I knew I just did not let up. And then after a <laughs> while, I felt really bad. And, and she was crying. And she's like, why, why do you have to be so mean? I was like, I was, I used to be a big cutter offer. I used to cut people off. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe there's a reason. Like, maybe it's a good thing sometimes. But I, I used to be a, like a big time. Like, if someone gave me shit, I'd be like, I don't need this. Fuck. Like, mm-hmm. I would cut a lot. Like, I feel like I have like eight. Like, like if you go to my block contacts on my phone, I probably have like 20 people blocked on my phone. I, yeah, I still do that, especially, yeah. I think this is probably why I'm going to be per- perpetually single too, because I'll be like, nah, that's it. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> yeah, it ta- yeah, no, relationships take compromise, you know? Like it takes yeah. a lot of... Um, they keep saying that, but I feel like I've compromised a lot and yeah, that I also know, doesn't yeah. work. I, so. I get it, I get it. I guess it. I guess it comes down to what compromises you're willing to make. Yeah. You know? I have to fit maybe I have to figure that out because I thought I, like for a while I was like you know what I'm pretty good girlfriend I don't understand it <laughs> and then I'm like but if I don't understand I'm obviously not a good girlfriend There's so you say you're single now. are you actively looking or are you just kind of enjoying life I'm done <laughs> I feel like you're gonna I, no I feel, I feel like because because you have that mentality now you're gonna find someone that's how I feel like it always works I feel like when people say they give up that's when they become more attractive because like like I don't I I didn't make the rules. This is just what I hear. (laughs) And I feel like in my life, it's always been like that. Like whenever I've just been like not thinking about it, that's when just people come out of the woodwork. 
I mean that. I mean, if somebody, if something like that happens, that's cool. But like, yeah. honestly, ugh, I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> you, no, I remember. I remember talking to you about this last year. You were doing online dating and stuff like that, and you yeah. were because it was the uh, it was the pandemic when we had our our podcast. Because it was the pandemic, you were doing like virtual dates with people. Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I deleted it. I deleted it out of my memory. What dating apps did you use? I used um for a while I was using OkCupid. Then I met who the guy who I wrote this book <laughs> after. <laughs> so then I stopped using OkCupid. <laughs> and then I went to Hinge for yeah, I a thought, while. I thought I thought OkCupid was supposed to be the good one, like the one where you get normal people on that one. Apparently there are none. In my age range there are none left, <laughs> <laughs> including me. I'm not normal either, so I guess <laughs> You're about to hit. Um, you're about to get the divorces. You got. You got to go after some divorces. I've tried that too, but then like divorces have ki- divorces with kids sometimes are like just not looking to settle down. So they're like because gotcha. oh. they're they're like kind of fed up sort of thing. Yeah, they're just like whatever. And then and I want I would like to be in a relationship. So I'm like now oh. okay. I've been. I was talking about this with one of my friends the other day. Do you want kids one day? See, like I want kids, <laughs> but I feel like I'm getting to the point where I'm running out of time where I might be able to have my own children. But I would be really open to adoption. Why am I so close to the mic? Oh I, it's God. okay. I, I make out with the mic. Literally, <laughs> um, I'm uh, no. I'm. I actually have this problem when I do live music events. I like. I, I get so <laughs> close to the microphone, and I've I've actually had audience members come up to me and be like, "We can't hear what you're saying because you're you're out of like <laughs> like." Uh, like kissing the mic and i'm like oh shit it's just a bad habit i have i hit my nose like every anytime i perform i hit my nose on the mic and that's when i'm like oh that's see this is the boundary right here it's just oh i forgot where i was going with that conversation me and what my one of my friends were talking the other day and we were like all of all of our smartest friends don't want kids Mm -hmm. so what is the world just going to be populated with a bunch of fucking idiots (laughs) and it's just interesting because I like I for some reason I'd imagine you to be because you're you're a very intelligent woman you're like into your poetry you're a career woman so I'm like I bet she doesn't want kids because I feel like the smartest people these days don't want kids you know that would been that would have been a smart decision in my head but I was like for a while I was like no nah, I don't want kids but then every time I see a baby I'm like I oh, want one <laughs> <laughs> no I, I I can I hear you I, I've gone through like phases in my life like ups and downs with wanting kids and not wanting kids mm-hmm. and um i remember i wanted them heavy when i was like in my 20s like i i really wanted them and then i went through a phase where i didn't want them and then when i, I went like I, I like it goes back and forth now i'm like i've been doing a lot of soul searching lately and i've the past year learned that i've talked about i i hate repeating myself on the podcast but you know just in case other people i felt like i was so isolated the past year that I kind of had this epiphany that I was like, I need people in my life. And mm. because of that, now I'm like, well, now I want kids. Like, like it just always goes back and forth for me, but I'm like kind of leaning more towards wanting kids now just because, um, like I said, I, I had spent so much of my life isolated. And I, I think that, I don't know, I think people belong together. I think people are meant yeah. to be together. So um, the idea of building a family sounds like a good thing to me, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like um, that, actually, you know what? I will say that um, the last year of like isolation and everything has taught me that I really hate people in general. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but Wait, so I, how did being isolated teach you you hate people? I, I, I now that like people are coming out and like people oh, are oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So now so you were by yourself and now that you're out again you're like Yeah, I'm like I, I think I might be no, going inside again. I had the total opposite <laughs> thing. I was excited about the quarantine cuz I thought I was like this major introvert and then the more isolated i got the worse and worse and crazier i like the more mentally ill i got like the more yeah, depressed yeah. i got and the more anxious i got and i was like holy shit i think i'm an extrovert and my whole life i thought i was an introvert like yeah. it, it was just this a major epiphany i had and it's like almost like anytime i feel depressed th- whenever i'm around people i don't feel depressed anymore and it's, it's which is kind of not good like i should be able to be happy on my own but i'm just mm. not i don't know it's weird I feel like I have like three or four people mm-hmm. as like my max, yeah. <laughs> but but also like it made me appreciate my family more. So yeah. that's why I was I was saying like I get that's what made me realize. Oh hi cat. <laughs> hi, hi you. Hi Neil's my best friend. Yeah. But anyway, um, what I was saying is, uh, 
I forgot. Oh yeah, so it made me appreciate my family more because I was always like closer with my friends than my family, and yeah. I realized that nah, uh, I really want a family too. I don't. I want to keep expanding yeah. the family and and adoption wasn't something that i ever thought about before yeah. and i was like if i if i have the financial means to do it i would i would i would love to do that and it would be an ethic oh my god look i want you to come in my lap <laughs> he's not a lap jumper oh damn he's not a lap jumper um <laughs> he's really <ca> <laughs> he's just playing he's tag. jumping all over you i he's love just, it yeah no he won't jump in your lap but he'll like he'll like swat at you because he wants attention basically he always comes out when i'm filming a podcast too like i think he <laughs> senses like the the energy he wants to be part of the vibe do you want to do you want to read a poem he doesn't really like, does he want to <laughs> read a poem do you have, can you find a poem in your book that you could read that would be a suitable for a cat like maybe one of the dark poems oh i wondered that's an interesting <laughs> this what, is an interesting challenge i'm willing to take like what which one of your poems would resonate with neo cool but he's like so cute hold on <laughs> that doesn't mean my poetry's not cute <laughs> hold on <laughs> i'll figure something out um ooh, how about this one okay let's hear it just remember even a diamond started off as coal there is no such thing as an unattainable <laughs> goal you are the creator and destroyer of your own destiny keep your dreams high and you will land them successfully Woo! <laughs> Neo, Did, keep your dreams high and you will land them successfully. <laughs> it seems like he appreciated that. <laughs> and he did start from Cole. He was a he was a piece of shit when we first got him and now he's the best. He's so he's so successful up. now. <laughs> I really want Neo in my lap. I feel guilty, but no, he, he really doesn't like I feel guilty because he doesn't really like getting picked up, but sometimes I just pick him up and he like He's like on the fence about it. Like he'll start purring, but then he'll like wiggle like he wants to get. Oh, he's he's gonna get you again. Look, he did. Soko Soko's like that too. He likes to play more than like he snuggled. <laughs> but I'll pick him up and he'll be like, he's super playful. He's like a big kitten. He's two. I mean, he kind of still is a kitten in a way. He's only two years old. He's really not that old. Everyone loves the nails. All the all the animals. Oh, do you have nails. do you have uh, fake nails? Yeah. I can't do that because I play piano. So I literally can't like I can't do like I love getting pedicures. I'm a big pedicure hoe. Oh, I go so crazy great. over a pedicure. I get the gel um, mm -hmm. nails. I have to have the most boring nails because it's crazy. You wouldn't you wouldn't think this, but even painting my nail, even keeping my nails short and painting them clear affects my piano playing. Just that little that. tiny layer of the thinnest paint like actually affects my piano playing it's actually, really weird i get that i used to play for like a while for i think 15 you told years. me that and you yeah. used to sing yeah <laughs> i don't do that anymore <laughs> <laughs> i my voice got a little too husky for that but in the middle but <laughs> you i remember you saying that the last pocket what do you think changed your voice like just age or or did you used to be a smoker or what happened i never smoked i think i was just like puberty uh, <laughs> i don't know yeah but that's not to say anything like you don't if you have a deeper voice you can just be an alto singer you know yeah that's what i thought and then i and i was like an alto one when i was in choir and stuff yeah. like that and but then i couldn't hit those notes but i could hit baritone notes and i was like i don't know if i want to do that <laughs> the rest of my life <laughs> no i'm 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 more of an alto myself i i i struggle with the higher notes it's just not doesn't fit now like even you can hear my speaking voice is just a little bit lower i don't mm. know why it's just the way i'm built i guess I want to pick him up. I'm, I'm so obsessed. Yeah. He said, oh, I damn feel it. Look guilty. at his face. Look at his face. <laughs> damn it. Damn it, mom. <laughs> I feel somewhat guilty, but I am his mother, so he has to yeah. tolerate it. <laughs> he's like, damn it, man, but okay. He That's the thing. When he, when he gets picked up, he's kind of annoyed, but he also kind of secretly likes it. He starts purring. He makes a oh. weird face, but then he starts purring. He's so snuggly. And he's very soft yeah he's very soft i don't know if you want to pet his he's head. so snuggly as i've been doing the whole day that i was like oh, i'll give you your moment yeah he's <laughs> super soft i'll put it back down i feel guilty so we are going to end the podcast here um some of my listeners have already seen you but for those who are seeing you for the first time today let them know where they can follow you i will also include a link in the section down below so you can click on that easily but let them know what's going on with you and where they can follow you and find you if they want to find out when your next book is coming out and stuff like that sure um i have like a bunch of stuff going on first of all um there's a festival that's i'm um, coordinating with um dj team my mystic mystic writer and um neptune and it should be coming out in summer sometimes so take a take a look for 
keep a lookout for that i'll let you know you guys know more about that on my page uh the book of course and i'm always performing places so definitely go ahead and check me out on um, instagram at r.sen underscore the poet um, you can find pretty much anything about me including lots of dog reels <laughs> lots <laughs> so if you like dogs you like poetry check her out and again this is the prans out of podcast episode 52 if you enjoyed yourself don't forget to hit like subscribe comment all the good stuff and we will see you next week for episode 53 have a good night guys bye